Mr. President, we could not be more honored or excited to uh, bring to a close our first plenary session at AJC's Global Forum in Israel, celebrating Israel's 75th, uh, than to be uh, graced by your presence and have the opportunity to hear you uh, on our stage. Thank you again for being with us. Thank you very much. First of all, it's a great honor to be here with you this evening with my wife, the First Lady, Michal. We're very honored to be here. We're happy, Ted. We are very proud of you, Ted, that you took over the helm. Uh, last time we met when you came with Speaker Nancy Pelosi to the President's home on an official visit, and you're doing a terrific job. Uh, I have huge respect for the American Jewish Committee for its historic role, for what it does, for its impact on the Jewish world, Israel, and the entire universe. And we're also, Michal and I, are very proud that our niece, Alexandra, is a high big shot in this organization. We, uh, we, are, as, we are as well. I, as an organization that is committed to advocating for the Jewish people in its entirety all around the world, the, your advocacy, your commitment to diaspora Jewry, to recognizing the importance of every Jew around the world, uh, is an inspiration to us. And for us to have this opportunity, uh, it, I'd like to start by asking the question, all of your efforts to engage the broadest cross-section of the Jewish world from left to right, from, from secular to orthodox, uh, you've gone out of your way to, to be the president of Israel who is really representing the people of Israel. Where does that come from? Is it just part of the role you see yourself playing. Uh, it's personal to you, clearly. If you could just share with us. It is a passion, and it, I think it's also part and parcel of the role of the president, meaning the president is the head of state of the only Jewish nation, the nation state of the Jewish people in the world. And as such, it's only natural that he will have such a role, but it also comes out of a deep passion of mine. As you know, my late father, Chaim Herzog, was also Israel's president, was the sixth president. And I come from a family that serves the Jewish people for generations. Some of you have known my uncle, Abba Iban, who was Israel's legendary foreign minister. Some of you have known my other uncle, Jacob Herzog, who was a huge diplomat. Some of you have known my grandfather, Rabbi Isaac Alevi Herzog, who was Israel's chief rabbi and a huge Jewish leader. You know my brother, Mike, who's the ambassador in Washington. I can go on and on if you want to. <laughs> but truly, we believe in the Jewish people. We believe that the story of the Jewish people, I believe in the story of the Jewish people, my previous role was chairman of the, Israel, the, the world's biggest Jewish organization, the Jewish Agency. And I'm adamantly passionate, me and my family, about the story of the Jewish people. And we are a small nation of about 15 million plus Jews around the globe in a sea of 8 billion human beings. We have a role to play. We have a role. We have, we have a story. We have a role. And therefore, we should protect and preserve the unity of our people amidst all of its differences. And that's why I've launched my initiative of uh, Voice of the People, Kola Am, where now, right now, if, as of this week, we are holding labs all over the Jewish world to have discussions about how do we move on, how do we care for each other, and how do we identify the future leadership of the Jewish people. Uh, you're Thank you. Thank you for launching that effort. Um, I, um, I just want to pause to marvel at the way that your family's history is just inextricably well, linked. Well, and I, yeah, with I haven't the even told you half of it, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, I had a, one of my father's uncles was the head of the AFL CIO. <laughs> he was Sidney Hillman. And FDR would say, clear it with Sid. So now you have to understand what Shabbos dinners means in our family. There's no way you can escape this stuff. <laughs> uh, Ask Michal. <laughs> you are, uh, you are sit so you're sitting here in a room full of people whose Shabbos dinners, uh, well, 
while we don't have the same personal connections throughout, uh, throughout the history of Israel that you have, our, our Shabbos dinners, I, I'm comfortable saying all of us, uh, are full of conversations about Israel, about the importance of Israel, about the role that the diaspora Jewry can play, how we can ensure a strength and ties between the Jewish people in America and around the world and Israel. And I know that you're just launching this really important effort, and I'm not asking you to guess what the outcome will be, but I will ask, um, right now, even as you're, in, you're starting this process, as we go back, when we go back to America, when we go back to, to our 25 regional offices and, and our offices around the world, what can we be doing to help strengthen the relationship between diaspora Jewry and the state of Israel? So you have a huge role to play. And I would say first that I believe that part of the problem is the lack of understanding of what Israel is all about. There is, there's a judgmental attitude in certain spheres of American public life, in certain quarters, that judges us according to a certain skeleton, uh, scale sorry, that is not always realistic in terms of where we live and what we do. We are a small uh, nation which is truly challenged by a huge enemy which works day in, day out to undermine us, to kill our citizens, uh, employ terror against us, surround us from all sides, um, and, and rush to the bomb, and spread anti-Semitism and hatred. And on the other hand, we are a nation that is extremely zestful, successful, uh, reaching incredible heights in so many incredible fields that you know. We will discuss the internal issue and the judicial reform in a minute, I'm sure. But all I'm saying is that in some places, you know, we are judged wrongly by what we do and how strategic we are. And I think you have a, an immense role to play in telling the story of Israeli democracy, diversity, achievements. We can, of course, deal with the faults and mistakes like any nation. I've got news for you. All nations are challenged and simmering and, and debating, especially in the modern era. And, uh, and of course, they need to protect and preserve our only Jewish state in the world. So we're here on a... We're, we're here on a Sunday afternoon. Um, last night, uh, again, there, was, there were massive protests around the country. Democracy, Israeli democracy, in action. How, how should we be thinking about all of that? First of all, let's understand where we're at, because the talks are under my auspices, and I give huge attention to this process, and I find it serious and important. And I also tell the leaders that they bear huge responsibility as to the fate and outcome of these talks, and especially as to the effort that is needed in order to reach a wide agreement on the core issues which are so important. These are critical days, and I sincerely hope that the leaders and the elected officials will take the right decisions, because not only the people of Israel want a wide agreement, consensus on the core issues, without, of course, hurting the basic rules of democracy and the independence of the judiciary, but more importantly, I also feel that in this room, the Jewish world demands us not to be torn apart and want us to move forward with a dialogue. We, uh, AJC, uh, from the moment you launched your effort to bring the parties together, has been as supportive as we possibly can be. We agree that this is a moment that that the diaspora as a whole has to recognize why we cannot afford to let it tear us apart. Absolutely. Look, the debate itself on the core issue of the boundaries between the three arms of government is a legitimate debate that stems from a process of debating that has ensued 30 years ago. These are critical questions that have come out when you don't have a constitution. How far can one arm of government supersede the other. That's all a very legitimate debate. The way it's done, what has it unleashed, 
actually, perhaps it's good that it has come up now as a public issue, as a real in-depth discussion of where we are and where we are going to as a nation. It's, I find it actually a potentially healthy process where we air out our difference and talk, talk to each other. And by the way, our home, the president's residence, both Michal and me and the entire team, we are hosting thousands of Israelis every month who are discussing these issues from all sides of Israeli multicultural society. And we have to face that reality and try our best to come to amicable solutions which preserve our democracy, which protect our democracy, which preserve and protect the independence of our judiciary, which is a very noble uh, arm of government, and nonetheless find the right answers as to the boundaries between these arms of government. And, and we wish you nothing but success in reaching that compromise. Uh, finally, Mr. President, there are uh, over 400 young participants here, high school students, college students, um, young adults. Uh, as, <laughs> as, as, you, as, as you prepare to exit our stage, do you have no, a message? I also want to say a word about the Abraham Accords before you ask me about that. Oh, I would. Let, let's shift gears. I'm trying I'll to be respectful both. of time. Well, no, don't but, worry. We'll take okay. another few minutes. Great. So I just I, want. I'm going to put that down. Let me. No, it's okay. We'll at the I, end. Well, then I, I've got a lot to ask. No, Mr. no, President. not a lot. Uh, but I, let me just ask this instead. Uh, we just came from the UAE, and and we heard over and over the story of your visit to the United Arab Emirates to advance Israel's place in the world, and the attacks that were launched against the UAE, and the expectation as a visiting uh, as a visiting president that those attacks would prompt you to leave the UAE. Instead, you had nothing. You said no to that. You, you extended your stay. Talk to us about how you view your role in advancing Israel's place. I believe that the Abram Accords, which have followed the trailblazing peace agreements with Jordan and Egypt, are a sea change. Sea change in history, sea change in world affairs in the region because there is an opening of a real dialogue between Jew and Muslim in the region. We see it all over. The interactions are huge. And I find the role of the United Arab Emirates and the Kingdom of Bahrain, which we visited as well, immensely important. And I truly believe that we should make an effort that the next chapter will be with Saudi Arabia. I also want to commend the Kingdom of um, Morocco, which uh, has, got, has, has gone and is a leap ahead dramatically in the, our relations, and I believe in that relations uh, tremendously. I also want to commend the Sudan, and I hope that they will settle their affairs. But I want to say something about the UAE, because the UAE is moving forward continuously in the relationship, and that is extremely important. I want to uh, congratulate my good friend, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, the president of the United Arab Emirates, for assuming the leadership of the um, International Climate Conference known as COP28, which will take place a few months down the road. I was extremely honored to receive a personal invitation by Sheikh Mohammed and his government, and I will attend that conference together with Prime Minister Netanyahu. And I also want to add that most importantly is that this conference is steered and headed uh, by Sheikh Sultan El Jaber, by Dr. Sultan El Jaber, who is uh, the, uh, the representative of the UAE in dealing with climate issues, because I believe that the cooperation between Israel and the Arab nations Israel and the United Arab Emirates and its neighbors as to the issue of climate and its impact in the world is, has a huge potential and it sends a spirit of inclusiveness, of friendship, of, a, of future, of hope to our peoples. And I uh, welcome this wholeheartedly and I believe it will make a huge change in the future. Thank, thank you. Uh, uh, and it, 
AJ, AJC, as you know, Mr. President, through our offices in Jerusalem and in Abu Dhabi, remains committed to advancing this vision that you describe, uh, as well as the opportunities to build closer relations between Jews sure. and Muslims. Uh, and I am being told to wrap it up, but if you would yeah, like yeah, to no, stay. No, no, So let's okay. uh, take one, the, your final question now you can do. So I, I'm. The 400 youngsters here. Yes, yes. I, I, how did you know that was my next question? Yes. Because that's uh, what you said. The, I, it's not often that they get to hear from the president of the state of Israel. What would you like them to hear before you leave our stage? So guys, you have a, your generation will face many challenges. Our parents' generation faced, our generation faced, and your generation will face. You will have to take a lead role and in, 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 in add another chapter in the history of the Jewish people. And I would say that one is the challenge of unity, meaning not uniformity, but unity, meaning the respect, deep love, and affection between the nation state of the Jewish people, the state of Israel, and its people, and the Jewish diaspora, wherever it may be. All Jews must be able to practice their beliefs with no fears and with no harassment and be connected in their hearts to the state of Israel. And we should, we should be able to have the, the um, impact, the influence of the Jewish world within our society, within our democracy, understanding that Israel is a developing society, evolving society into a more multicultural, more diversified, fascinating, interesting, and promising country. Thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency, the President of the State of Israel, Isaac Herzog, thank you, to President Herzog, thank you, First Lady.